Hi, in this exercise we're going to follow along with raster operations. Here we're going to be looking at deer habitat and the potential for deer collisions. You can see here I'm looking at national land cover data set for a very small area in Durham County. I've created a very small subset using my environmental tools in my raster calculations because raster operations take a fairly long time to go uh, to be performed. So what we're going to look at here is our national land cover data set here and you can see here the Anderson classification scheme right here. I also have my potential habitat right here which is 0 or 1. 0 meaning it's not deer habitat, 1 mean, which means it is deer habitat and I also have uh, water, my, my water bodies right here. So the first operation that we're going to look at under neighborhood in my spatial analyst tools, I'm going to look at focal statistics here. My input raster is going to be my NLCD study area and I'm going to create a 3x3 three three rectangle. There's a lot of different operations that we can do here. And remember from our lectures, it creates a neighborhood and that doesn't have to be a rectangle. It could be a circle or an irregular wedge or an annulus or whatever we want to make it where that it has a 3x3 three three roving neighborhood and the center pixel is going to be based on this particular statistic right here. So I can calculate the mean or the majority or the variety. Now, looking at the data right here, mean probably isn't a good idea because this is nominal or categorical data here. So an 11 isn't half that of a 22, or 22 isn't almost half that of a 43, or there's no 44 using Anderson classification scheme. But other things with categorical data that I can look at is a majority, which one occurs the most? Which one occurs most often? A variety means how many different types of pixels do we, pixels do we have within a particular neighborhood. I'm going to run a variety because I think it's kind of interesting to see how many different pixels are within each of these nine pixels that we're looking at here because when we look at deer vehicle collisions and the potential for deer vehicle collisions, we look at different species or different habitat that they have. So if they have to cross from forest to lake and have to cross over urban areas or roads to get there, there's more of a chance of a collision here. And this is what we call speed, this is what we call land cover fragmentation here. There's particular measures that we can look at to do this. But in this case, I'm going to look at the variety right here. Yeah, and when I'm all set here, and I, like I was saying before in the environments, I can set my raster analysis, my particular mask to say, I just only want to set it for my grid area right here. Okay. Or my grid final right here, which is uh, what we're looking at, this very small area here within Durham County and you can see what we're doing here. I'm just running my focal statistics and even for a very small area here, it takes a little while to run. While we're doing this, we're also going to look at my distance calculation here. I'm also going to look at areas that are particular distance around my uh, vector data, which in this case are going to be my lakes here. So I can create a vector, G, uh, I can create a raster GIS data layer using my vector data as my input. And then in the next tutorial, we're going to talk about some calculations and ways that we can go through and measure what's going on or create some sort of what we call mask overlay processing using our raster calculator or map algebra tool here to calculate these. Okay, you can see in the bottom right hand corner here, you can see the the status of my running. It's at about 20% right now. And it'll take a minute or two to go through and run, and we'll let it do that. And we're about a quarter of the way done. Well, we're about a third of the way done. These things take a long time to run. And you can actually, while I'm running this, you can see how tiny of an area we're looking at right here. You can see Durham County right here. And I've, I've got a couple quads from a previous study that we're looking at here. This is probably a tenth to a twelfth 
the size of Durham County, and you can see how long it takes to run. We're about halfway done right here. Uh, I can right go into here. And while we're running these, we can go through and look at some of the properties here. Okay, You can see I have a color map here, because a lot of times it'll, when we place nominal or categorical data into here, it'll just give me random colors. So what I've done is imported a color map based on values that I know that it's going to be or know that it's going to need it's going to need using a particular convention here. Uh, we've got my display, my extent operations here, my symbology, and my general and my source here. So we have 30 by 30 meter pixels here and even for this tiny little study area here, you can see it's fairly small. Okay. Um, it's fairly small. You can see the uncompressed size that we have here. Okay, we're at about 75 percent. We're almost done. We're still working. Okay, about 85 percent. You can imagine for a tiny area we're looking at here, we're looking at about four miles by four miles. You can see how long it takes to run. So imagine running a processing uh, a a raster processing uh, operation on, you know, counties or states. These things take a very long time, so you really need to budget your time when you manage raster data. Or a lot of times, a lot of projects, people will work with an entire state, and you can imagine a pixel, whether it's 30 by 30 meters or even one kilometer by one kilometer, how many pixels you're going to require to process this entire study area. So a lot of times when we work with raster data, you really want to limit limit your study area if you want to get fast results. Okay, and we're just about done here. Okay, here we go. Okay, and what we ran, I believe we ran the variety. And the variety wanted to find, and we'll see what these results look like here. Okay, here we go here. We have values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And you can see in the bottom uh, right hand corner, it tells me what these mean. Okay, and I can zoom in here. 1 through 6. 6 means for that 3 by 3 pixel that we had, any value of 6 means there were 6 different types of pixels of these 11 through 95 within a 9 by, uh, within a 3 by 3 or 9 cell neighborhood. One meant there was only one pixel within that 3x3 three three neighborhood. So these darker areas here, there's purple and this blue and this red, mean that there is more variety. So as you can imagine, there might be more of a chance of deer vehicle collisions or in something like this. I can look at my symbology. I can look at classified right here. I can create six classifications here, and then I can run it a little differently here. So you can see what we look at here. Okay, so we can see my variety. So the lighting areas have more variety, darker areas have less variety. Other thing that we're going to look at right here is we're going to run a Euclidean distance. So I want to look for areas that are within a particular distance of a vector water body right here. So my input raster is going to be my water, uh, water grid project. This is going to be my output, my cell size. I'll specify that to be, oh, let me make it 100. I believe this is going to be 100 feet. And in my environments right here, I'm going to go up to my processing extent and make sure I set it to be my grid. Okay. Down here, and under raster analysis, I'm going to set my mask to be my grid final also. 
Okay, so you see what I did right here? Okay, same as grid final. Because a lot of times when we run these operations, it's only going to process to the process it to the extent of the vector vector features here. And you notice my study area extends a little further than that. Okay, when I'm set, I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to run this Euclidean distance command here. Okay, and here we go. Okay, and as we zoom in, what do these really mean? As you zoom further and further in right here, you can see my pixels here. This pixel, if I click on this particular pixel right here, and I'm going to have to go to Euclidean distance water. If I click on this pixel right here, it's got a value of 1920 here. That means it's 1920 units. And I think in this case it's going to be feet, but I can go through and check using my uh, measurement tools up here. But 1920 feet from the nearest water body. So in this particular exercise, we looked at a couple different operations. We looked at distance, we looked at some neighborhood operations, and for your exercise number nine, which covers chapter number eight, you're actually going to go through and do some surface analysis. We're going to do the same type of thing where you're going to compute the slope based on a digital elevation model.